So, good morning, everyone. Uh, to my surprise, the last tier list I made was uh, extremely well received. Uh, as soon as I put it online, just just gathered a lot of views. I got a lot of comments about it, but I also got a lot of comments asking me about when I would make a, a similar tier list for PTD. Uh, and I, I always replied that I would not make one until I had cleared on every job, but there there we are now, and I have in fact cleared uh, cleared on every job. Uh, and now I so now I feel qualified to make a tier list for PTD. And uh, it's gonna be exactly like last time. We're gonna uh, rank all the jobs in each tier, and then at the end, I'm gonna do like a, a last one last swoop, and just kind of like go over like my choices and see if I still agree with them. And uh, yeah, the jobs are also in the same order as last time. So let's just jump into it. Uh, we're starting with Dragoon. So Dragoon is a melee. So the thing you the thing you have to know about melees. Uh, compared to Evan on High melee, the melees are usually a little better in PUTD because the monsters don't hit as hard. And it means that it's way easier to get a lot of value out of your blood bat and just like, you, you just don't die in two hits from uh, most of the monsters. Some of them are still going to blow you up instantly, but like most of the monsters are not going to blow you up instantly. So I would say the melees are a little better uh, than the ones in Evan on High. Uh, Dragoon. Dragoon has a very high base armor, which puts it a little above the other melees. Like, you don't really have a defensive on Dragoon, but just the fact that your armor and health is so high, it really helps you survive. Uh, so you, you have all the goodies from melee. You have Blood Bat, you have a stun, and you have all that good stuff. Uh, Dragoon's burst is mostly uh, cooldown based, which is a, always a bonus. If you don't have to build up any kind of resource, it's always better for deep dungeons. Uh, for this reason, I think I would put it in... So you would think I would put it in Descent. So the melees have actually one big drawback in uh, PUTD, which is the 190 boss. The 190 boss is extremely hard on melees. Uh, it is very hard. And so for this reason, I I just don't think Dragoon can be in Descent. Like, I, honestly, if it was not for the 190 boss, I think I would put Dragoon in Descent. But just because you have that, that 190 wall, I have to put it there. And also, like, uh, Dragoon has a lot of... Uh, it, this is not so bad anymore because they changed it, but it, uh, you, you have a lot of things that uh, lock you in place, which also makes it a little harder. Uh, so I would say it's a perfectly average pick. I, I think it belongs there. Uh, now we're going to go on to uh, Ninja. So I, I just said that 190 is a big challenge on melees. This is also true for Ninja. But the thing with Ninja is that uh, the way your burst works, you, like, it's mostly wrenched. Well, not, not mostly your burst, but, like, you, you have a lot of wrench options to do, like, big damage. So, like, it, this, it is much easier to kite monsters, which helps a lot on 190. Also helps a lot on the floors themselves. Uh, there's a lot of monsters that you're just gonna kind of, uh, destroy on ninja just because you can kite them way more than other melees. Which means you don't rely on steel as much as you would on the other melees. Uh, also, talking of Ninja, Ninja is just, just has an amazing kit for Deep Dungeon. Hide is very good, letting you sneak past side monsters. Which I know there's a lot of proximity monsters in PUTD, but there's still quite a lot of side monsters. Like, this is definitely gonna help you a lot. A lot. Uh, for example, like the, the, the best example is when you have uh, something like Flood Dragons blocking uh, the key. Every other job in the game has to deal with that, except Ninja. Ninja can just hide past the, the, the Dragons with no problem. Uh, so Ninja's Burst also resets whenever you hide. That is a huge bonus. That means you can kill a monster and then you can reset your most of your Burst for the next monster, which means you gain a lot of time overall. Uh, something I also did not mention, all the melees, they have, a, they have a pretty rough 190, but they have a pretty easy 180 in exchange, right? So they don't have like a complicated Burst to do on 180 on the last 15%. For, for, for all these reasons, I I would honestly say that Ninja belongs to being strong. I it's it's I it could maybe be like being a very strong descent, but I think it belong it belongs in strong at least for the moment. I'll see like uh, at the end when I'm shuffling things a little bit, but it's it's just a very strong pick. Definitely the melee you want to go for if you if you want to do a melee. Uh, next monk. So monk is weird. 
Monk, this is my most, this is my least favorite job. So it's it's a little, a little bit hard for me to not have bias for Monk. But I have to admit, Monk has really nice, like really strong damage. The, out of all the melees, this is probably, Monk I think does almost as much as Reaper. Like it's actually insane. Uh, but now the big drawback on Monk is that for Putty specifically, you don't have Riddle of Heart yet. Which means... You have you have like zero things to survive in the UTD compared to Evan. Like like the big upside of Monk, which is like that you're very like uh, sturdy, is not really existent there. Uh, and this is a huge drawback. Also, you don't have range. You don't have any kind of range move. Which honestly, I don't even think it's that bad for the the floors themselves. Like usually, you can always find a monster that you can pull without having to go uh, too far. But this, it's a huge is, uh, issue on 190 because whenever you're kiting 190 and you have to do a lot of kiting on 190, you have nothing to do on Monk. Like you can only uh, prepare your um, your meditate, but like you don't have any range attack. Uh, for this reason, I think Monk is average. Like it's it would be in support if it had normal damage, but it has insane damage, so I think it it puts it like in average. It's not as sturdy as Dragoon, it has no range attack, but it does just so much damage that it, it, it belongs in at least average, in my opinion. Oh yeah, Samurai. Samurai is interesting. Uh, they, they recently did a change for Samurai where they removed Katen, it's which is one of its skills. Uh, so the, that change was kind of controversial. And I personally, I don't like the change, but I, I have to admit that for Deep Dungeon, the change is very good. Because PUTD Samurai used to have big issues with your Kenki. The issue was that you could not generate enough Kenki to spend, uh, to use like uh, all your stuff all the time. Uh, and they also lowered the level of the Kenki Spender, which are, I think it's called Shinten or something like that. So like now, the, the, the way you play it in PUTD now, it feels much better than before because now you just kind of gain free uh, Kenki just doing like, uh, just doing your normal uh, your normal attacks and then you you can spend it on your uh, Shinten and you can also spend it on your uh, on your charge and your jump back because they have the same potency per Kenki value as your spender. These changes made Samurai way better than before. Before, I would have put Samurai in sub four, no contest. Now I think, I, but I don't think it, it deserves to be this indecent. The reason I don't think it deserves to be indecent is because Samurai, the way the Samurai burst works, or like it's, it's DPS in general, is that everything you do on Samurai, you need to, to build up resource for it. So it, it just, it's kind of clunky. It's like, it's, it's not easy to, explore while also building up your resource and, and then it means like every time you have downtime you're just getting barely any value out of that downtime and so for this reason i i just don't think samurai is that good like it, it has pretty good damage uh, it has a surprising amount of mobility now with the new like uh, the new tanky change but it, it's just like a big downside it also kind of suffers way more than the other melees whenever you get blind because when you get blind, it becomes very hard to do prepare a Midari at all. Like blind is actually significantly worse in Samurai. Also, last issue for Samurai is that all the melees except Monk have kind of like a defensive thing that helps them a lot. Like Dragoon is very sturdy as a lifesteal thing. Ninja has a shield, Reaper has a shield. Uh, issue with Samurai is that it's defensive. It sucks really bad. It's like... It's a thing you have to time, and it only reduces, I, I think it's 10 or 15% of one attack. Uh, it's not good at all, and, and Samurai itself has very has low armor and HP amongst the, the melees, I believe. I believe it's, it may be the lowest uh, alongside Monk, but I'm not sure there. But anyway, it feels this feels like a very squishy job. It also struggles a lot against, uh, so it struggles way more against monsters for this reason. Because it, it has the issue of both needing to prepare the, its resources, so it needs to be fighting. But it, but then it also kind of sucks at fighting, like, for uh, for um, extended periods of time, because it just doesn't have a good way to survive. It just it, it just bursts, basically, with Bloodbath, like all the other melees, and doesn't have, doesn't have anything else. So for this, re for this reason... Um, sorry. 
<clears throat> I think I would put it in average as well. I, like I said, I would put it in subpar before the K10 change, but now I think it belongs in average as well. You're, you're kind of seeing the trend there, right? Like, all the melees are kind of average. Like, they, they, they're, they're a little better than Evan and I, but, like, they, they just... Like, 190 makes it hard to make any of them decent, except Ninja. Uh, but now we have Reaper. Reaper uh, is an exception to the melees, because Reaper... So Reaper is, is funny, because Reaper's kit is actually so bare bone, like you have nothing. Like you, you have one, two, three, and I think a new GCD, and that's it. Like you, you have barely any buttons. Thing with Reaper is that they, they give you a threat around level 60, I think like a, a couple levels before, that that boosts your, your potencies, but it boosts them so much that it's insane. Like the damage you do on Reaper is actually ridiculous. It is, I believe, it is the highest damage out of, out of any job right now in PTD, which means you do have all the downsides of melee, which is that you, you rely on steel more, you're squishy, you have to be in melee range, Titan is hard. But you do so much damage that most monsters, you, you blow them up before like they kill you, uh, especially if you have Bloodbath. Uh, this makes Reaper very strong. Also, another thing that makes Reaper very strong is its defensive cooldown is insane. It's a shield uh, with a very short cooldown that reduces a lot of damage. And it's a shield. Like, a shield is a big... Like, a shield is not equal to a heal. A shield makes it so... Anytime you're fighting a monster that has a strong single attack, like, a, I don't know, like, let's say the, the monkeys, right? Or uh, any anything that has a tank buster, like, the shield saves you much more than a heal. Because you don't have to time it. Like you just use a shield and that's it. Um, I, I would say the only downside of Reaper, really, is that your wrench pull is a cast. So it's kind of clunky to use. It's definitely clunky. The, this is mostly annoying against 190, the 190 boss. But then you also have the shield that makes 190, like, in my opinion, probably almost as easy. Well, as it's not easy, right? But it, I would say it makes the 190 about the same difficulty as Ninja because you just... You have that shield that you can spam every single tank buster. Um, and also the, the the fact that your range pull has a cast time, it, it's it's kind of annoying in Evan and I because of petrification. Well it's not that big of a deal there because you, you're just you're just gonna be using it to pull or like the 190 boss, right? So or and like just because its potencies are so high, I, I just cannot put Reaper below strong. Like it's the potencies are just too good. Like so, if you want to go melee, it's definitely Ninja or Reaper. You you're looking for these two. Well, unless you want a challenge. So that's it for the melees. Now we're gonna move on to the range GPS. Uh, starting with Bard. So, Bard Bard is a range. Well, I should go over the range GPS first. So the range DPS and PUTD are pretty damn good, because when they made PUTD, I I think they did not really account for like the amount of CC you could put out, and so. You can actually bind or slow most of the monsters, which trivializes them a lot. That's also true for stuns, by the way. There, you can stun most of the monsters as well. Uh, but but for like the slowing and the binding, it's very strong because it means that you, there's a lot of monsters that you can do on range GPS without steel, simply because you can slow them uh, long enough where you can kill them. Uh, so that is that is like the, the big thing for range GPS. And also, of course, like you can kite full time because you don't have any cast. Uh, cast, cast bars. Now the issue with Bard is that your damage is trash. Which means it's not true that you can always kill a monster if you slow it. Uh, usually what happens is you just don't do enough damage to kill it anyway. So like then you have you have to deal with the the last 30% of the monster and then he, he's not slowed anymore. Um also the the big big issue on Bard is that the 180 boss is a nightmare. The push on the 180 boss is an absolute nightmare. It is it is the the worst push out of any job, the most hard. Um it's a push that requires either RNG for crits and direct it or a resolution. Like you have to actually use a resolution pomander in your push or you will need luck. Uh for this reason I I think it's bad. Like it like even though it has all the upsides of range GPS, I just think the 180 is so hard that it's just bad. Like 
you're gonna you're gonna have a good time all the way to 180 and then you're gonna suffer like hell on 180 then after that you're gonna it's gonna be okay right but it's not gonna be as good as another range gps because the issue is that the monsters are getting tanky and your damage sucks and now you're gonna struggle uh to kill the monsters even if you can slow them so for this reason i think barge is just straight up bad like it, it's just it's just a worse version of uh, the king. Machinist, so not a surprise, Machinist is amazing. Machinist has all the upsides of a range GPS, and honestly, it's all it has. It, it has like nothing else, but it's, its damage is so high, and the way it does its damage is so good. It's because the bulk of its damage is a one cooldown that does a sh like a shitload of damage, right? And that, that kind of like cooldown base stuff it, it just works really well and it does a ton of damage it means that on machinist you can any monster you can slow you can almost always kill it even without strength before it reaches you like most of the monsters and if you have a strain and it's almost all of them um and that's that's a lot of like that makes it so that you don't really need you don't really need to know the monsters that well, Machinist, right? Like, because as long as you know you can slow it, then you just kind of slow it and you kill it. Um, though, uh, Machinist has some of its issues, though. Um, uh, number one issue is that if if you're stuck in a bad spot and you don't have room to kite, like, let's say you're fighting and you don't have room to kite, this is no longer amazing. This is, like, average or sub, or, like, you, you need kite on this job to succeed. Uh, but uh, it's, it's it's usually not too hard to get the uh, hiding room, right? Like, because the, the spawn room you spawn in it is always empty. So, like, you can always, at the bare minimum, pull monsters inside this one. And then what's probably going to happen is that you're going to find another room with, like, one or two monsters. And then you, you can kill these monsters. And then suddenly you have another room to kite in. And then you just kind of do that until you're out of the floor. And it works really well. Uh, this is also true for Bard and Dancer. It's just, it's even better for Machinist since its damage is so high. Uh, also, the 180 push on Machinist is, is significantly easier than uh, the other range GPS, which is kind of the reason it's an amazing and that you're gonna, not going to see the other ones uh, that high. 180 push on Machinist is very lenient, has a lot of uh, leeway. Uh, you, you actually, if you do the super potion uh, strat, which I recommend you do, uh, you, will, you will kill the boss of like a meteor ahead like it's you have a lot of leeway you don't need you don't need to do a straight push you don't need to care about the boss being at 15.1 percent you don't need to care about the double carry timing you just kind of need to build up your resource and then execute the rotation and it should it should always die like there's no rng required at all uh very easy push 190 is fairly easy as well because you can you can kite the whole time, right? So you don't have like this whole issue that you have on other jobs where you have to decide like if it's a good time to stop and attack the boss, but then you have to eat the tank monster, etc. So like Machinist is just amazing. But it's its weakness is debuffs. Because like if you keep getting no atom, there's just not much you can do. But like that's that's a weakness, right? But like it's it has too many upsides to not be amazing. Like it's definitely better than Ninja and Reaper, and I put them in strong, so it deserves to be there. Uh, next we have Dancer. So Dancer is kind of like Bard. Though, so the, I don't actually know if Dancer does more DPS than Bard, but Dancer's uh, damage is better suited because it's it's a big hit that you do. And you can like, um, you can pull up a lot of resource. That means you can blow up monsters like very fast. Uh, like let's say uh, you're fighting weak monsters and then you, you blow up your, your feathers or whatever and then once you're full, then you go kill a strong monster with all your resource. And like I said, the, the, the dance is one big hitting move, which which is cooldown based. So that's always good. Um, one ED on Dancer, though, is pretty bad. It's not as bad as the as bar, but it's pretty bad. And for for reference, so so the, the thing with the Dancer 180 push is that, it's that this job has a lot of uh, procs and RNG. So you might be looking at someone doing a 180 push on Dancer and they do it like super clean. It's like it dies almost a meter ahead and you're like, wow, that, that looks like a very easy push. But then you look at someone else who, who is also doing everything perfectly and then they kill it on the last GCD, right? Like it's 
it's inconsistent in its products, which means 180 is, is like easy sometimes, or sometimes it's really hard. But then it means you always need to prepare the 180, assuming you are going to get the worst RNG, right? So like the 180 is pretty sweaty, actually. Because you can't just rely on like getting good luck, you know? And so for this reason, I, I would not say Dancer is bad. But like, I would not really say it's average. Like, I think it's subpar, but it's, it's close, man. Like, it's, th this is one I'm going to revisit at the end and I'm, I might change my mind. I'm going to put it in subpar for now, just because I think the 180 is too bad to like, make it good. Like, it's, it's just like an RNG reliant 180. I, I just don't find that. I, I just cannot tell someone Dancer is average. When 180 is that hard, like there's just no way I can do that. Um, so anyway, that's that's it for the range GPS. So casters are like, I, I guess the thing casters all share is they have sleep, which is nice. It means you can sleep monsters, and also they have very squishy uh, help. I, I, I guess that's what defines casters. Like otherwise, they're just very different. Uh, Black mage. Uh, Black mage is bad. <laughs> like, like. It's funny because in Evan Ally, I like black, black black mage is not even that bad. It's okay because you have triple cast uh, that you can like you have two charge of triple cast, which means you can blow up monsters instantly while you're moving. Issue is that you don't have this in PUTD. So even though the monsters are squishier, which means they they kick your ass less, you you have no way to kite other than a quick cast now and then, and your thunder procs. And this alone, like if this, if it was just this, honestly, I think it would be a good support job. The 180 push on Black Mage is also not that bad. I would say it's fairly comfortable. It's it, you can kill it without like an entire meteor ahead. Though there's a little bit of added complexity from the fact that you don't uh, that you have to care about your ley line placement. Like if you put your ley line at a bad time the Cherub is gonna go over it and then you lose the push straight up. So like that's a little harder. And like I said, I think it would belong in subpar if 190 did not exist. Uh, 190, which is the big boss that you have to kite a lot. Uh, obviously, kiting is not really the, 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 the strength of Black Mage, which makes 190 very bad. And I mean like very bad, like the worst one of, out of any job. And like for this reason, it this this it's bad. Like, and it, I would say it's almost awful. Like the 190 is gonna take you so much energy, so much effort. And then I'm not even mentioning the monsters themselves. Like when you're doing the floors, like you kind of need steel because you you just have to stand there and like you know like cast at things. And then as soon as you zone into 181 plus. Like every monster is gonna kill you in like three to four hits, and so you you just cannot be standing there like for long. But and then like the cherry on top is the 190 boss, which is an absolute nightmare, very hard, and it's even harder when you consider that you you want to do 190 190 within one steal usually, but that is so hard on Black Mage to do within one steal. So like what what usually happens is you have to steal twice 190 on a job that is already starved for steal. Um, though I, I, there's one good thing I can say about Black Mage overall is that your damage is actually fairly high. I believe your damage is similar to, to Machinist. It, but that's assuming you're standing still. So like, like whenever you have a steel rolling, it does really well. I don't think you're going to run into much time issues on Black Mage. It's just like surviving issues, like big surviving issues. For this reason, I, and like the 190, like I said, I think it, it's, it's bad. It's just bad. It, there's no way it's just supper. Like, it's, there's no way this is comparable to Dancer. Uh, next job, then uh, Summoner. So Summoner is is like machinist, but less good. <laughs> like, like I don't even know how to describe Summoner otherwise. Like Summoner is like the, the same concept as machinist. It's, it's very strong cooldown based burst that doesn't need resource. Uh, it can kite like. Summoner can kite, I guess, and, and like eighty percent of the time, right? So like you you have to cast a little bit, but it's not a big deal. Uh, you do have sleep, which Machinist doesn't have. Sleep is useful sometimes. It's mostly useful when you're 
pop in a Lorraine or you're um, you want to unaggro a monster though you don't really want to unaggro a monster on summer like it's always better to kill it so it's mostly used for Lorraine's uh, it does pretty good damage I think it does similar to Machinist but the reason that I don't the reason I cannot put it in Amazing is because it's a caster uh, so it has like very low armor and very low HP worse than the Machinist you don't have Tactician which means uh, which honestly doesn't really change much but it's you have a shield instead uh, and the shield is it's pretty good but then it, it it relies like you cannot use it whenever your pet is uh is doing a summon which is a little clunky uh but like the the shield is the reason it is as strong like if, if this had no shield i would put it down in descent but the the fact that you have a shield that is useful it, it makes it kind of like offsets your squishiness a little bit and so for this reason, it's like, like I said, I think it's just a worse machinist. So that I, I think it's in strong, straight up. Like this, this could be a range GPS for all I care. Uh, now we have Red Mage, the, the whole king. But is he a king anymore? So Red Mage, Red Mage is like, did not really change much. But like everything else kept getting buffed and buffed. And now Red Mage, for this reason, is kind of like, not that good anymore in my opinion. Like it's it's decent, like because like, the thing with Red Mage is you're you're not doing amazing damage. Uh, you have squishy caster HP, which is a big downside. And like of course the big upside of uh, Red Mage is that you have a heal. But every time you heal, it's a GCD that you're wasting, which is bad for the clock. But it's mostly bad because it means let, let's say you're fighting a monster right and it's kicking your ass. If you waste a GCD to heal yourself, that's a GCD you're not using to kill the monster, right? Like, so it, it's, you, you can't just fix everything by healing yourself. At some point you have to be doing some damage as well. And so it, there, that's an issue you see a lot of people that, because Red Mage still, still has a reputation of being like the, the best solo job, right? It's not really true anymore. But when you see new players uh, doing Red Mage, the issue you see them run into is that they just, they, they rely on Verkir too much. And it, it ends up like being a bad thing because like they take you a very long time to kill monsters. And also they are so more likely, like they, they, they made the fights last longer, so they're more likely to die to a crit or something. Since you have like, you know, you have squishy caster HP and you have a heal, not a shield. So if you're fighting a monkey and the monkey just crits you because you've been fighting them for longer than usual, then you just die. It doesn't make a big difference. Also, another downside of Red Mage is that your melee combo requires you to be in melee. Which means you need a little knowledge of the monsters because you need to know when you're able to go in and uh, start using melee. Uh, for this reason, I, I just don't, I, I don't think Red Mage deserves to be strong anymore. I think it's decent. It's definitely better than the melees, but the the let's say it's better than the weak melees. But like, there's no way I can say that Red Mage is better than Summoner. That like, it's just not happening to me. Uh, and also, of course, the the obvious issue with Red Mage is that you're not kiting full time. Like, you're just kind of fifty percent kiting because of the the dual cast mechanic. Uh, though Red Mage did gain sleep, which is nice. But like all the casters gain sleep. Okay, so now we are going on to the tanks. Uh, tanks are very good in PUTD. They are also very good in Evil High. Uh, but they're very good in PUTD, I would say, since and Walker. For the big reason that the 180 push was uh, greatly simplified for the tanks. And they were already kind of good on the normal floor. So it's... It's like they got rid of their of their biggest weakness. Uh, though we're starting off with uh, the weakest tank, the Paladin. Paladin actually has a nice kit. Uh, you have Dots, which are very good to like, you know, like you just slap them on the monster and you keep exploring uh, during the Dots taking. Uh, it has like kind of like the, the Verkir equivalent. So it has an eel that wastes a GCD. But it's better than the Verkir from Red Mage because you're a tank. So like you're you're not gonna even if you use the clemency like now and then you're you're not gonna like you're gonna prolong, prolong the fight but you're not gonna die to a crit since you're a tank like so it, it's useful you're not gonna use uh, clemency as much as Verkir, hopefully but, but it's really useful when you're like in the bad spot and like you don't want to witch in or something like that it's it's much more useful than the red mage Verkir, in my opinion. Um. Uh, Paladin also has a very strong invuln. I would say the most beginner friendly invuln. 
issue with Sid and Vuln is that it's actually such a long cooldown uh, that you, you rarely get to use it. And it, it kind of like, it's it's kind of hard to use it like every other floors uh, for landmine because the cooldown is just really, uh, really high. Uh, but anyway, the, like the big downside of Paladin, of course, is your damage is, is bad. Like, your damage is pretty bad compared to the other tanks. Um, and like the fact that the tanks, they already struggle with time. And then the fact that you know, if let's say you're a new player trying Paladin, you're, you're using Clemency a little too much, and this is also cutting down into your damage even more. Like it's it's definitely not strong. It's like what I say, Paladin is decent. The thing with Tank, though, that you have to remember, uh, they have a very right. I should cover this before I place them. All the tanks have a very easy 190. They are the only job that has an easy 190. Uh, and 190 is a very big wall. Like, I know people, they kind of over hype 180, but like 190 is, is a big wall because it's just really easy to die to a crit and you don't have this issue on tank. So like, they have a very simplified 190. They have a little challenging... They have a 180 that's, I would say, like average challenge, like uh, of average difficulty. Paladin has the, the most hard 180 though, out of all the tanks in my opinion. So like it's definitely not strong, and I'm kind of like between average and decent. I'm gonna put in the average for now, but it's like a high average. I I would honestly, I would honestly be fine having a paladin by red mage. I'm gonna put it there for now, and I'm gonna decide later. Uh, next we have warrior. So, warrior is really strong. Like very very strong. So the big downside of tank, which is that you have low damage, is is still present for uh, warrior. Um, and I would say warrior's berserk is is kind of clunky to use in PTD as well, because you you do have to build up your resource before you use it. Now the thing with warrior though is that, well, I would say the thing with tanks is that you're fighting nonstop anyway, compared to a DPS. So it's uh, even though you have to build up your resource, you're just kind of fighting nonstop anyway. So like your resources are gonna get built up. So it's not a big, as big of a deal for uh, tanks. Um, so like yeah, the big upside for tanks, of course, is that you can fight any monster uh, without steel. And this is this is even more true for warrior. You can fight every single monster without steel on warrior. Uh, there's a couple monsters that you would need steel for if you were in a gloom debuff, but that's it. And then Ron Tushin is completely broken. Uh, heals you for ridiculous amounts. If you're doing Nui Pole, it will fill your health every time. Mates land mines uh, very easy as long as you know how to... As long as you time the Ron Tushin heal at the same time as you step on the landmine. And this may surprise you, but I, it, Warrior is amazing. I, I would argue that it's even a little better than Machinist. But I, I still... I, I would still like hesitate to put it above because the thing with warrior is that it's it's not hard to get through the floors. You just have to keep fighting nonstop. But what's I, I would say the 180 push for warrior is definitely a little more hard than machinist, and it's it's one of these kind of pushes that is long, a long push, which which to be fair, it's it's an easy rotation for the push. But the thing with long pushes is that it makes people stress stress out more, and so people are more likely to to mess up, right? So I think like warrior is a very consistent job. I, like if you gave me a hundred tries, I would definitely clear more on warrior than machinist. But there's like a couple things that like it makes it hard to get used to the warrior playstyle, like the tank playstyle. Like you're gonna run into time issues, which means you're gonna have to use your promoters more optimally. But like, once you, you start learning how to use your Promanders, this job, Warrior will completely like, like overthrow everything else. Uh, also, the thing with Raw Intuition that I did not mention is that Raw Intuition makes it so that you can do no item floors uh, basically like for free. Like, which also, at the same time, Raw Intuition also makes it so that you don't... You need some regen potions, but you don't need uh, much. In fact, I would say that you can uh, just start trying uh, to clear on water. You don't even need to farm punchers. Like you just go, 
use raw intuition probably all the way to like 170 without even healing yourself and then you're probably gonna have picked up a few butchers by then and then you're just gonna use them and like it's like very like requires very little amount of farming uh deals very good with no item debuffs which it's it's worst debuff is no ability but like you have to understand if 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 your worst debuff is no ability then you can rage the floors with no ability but if your worst debuff is no item like machinist you, you can't rage a no item right so whenever you get no item you basically can deal with it three times with three synergy but if you get no ability you can deal with it six times because you have three rage and three um synergies. and I, I guess you could art like three rezos as well but like you just have more ways to deal with no abilities so th this this is a very big upside for war it, it relies less on needing steals and needing serenities it just relies on like making a good use of your time but it has a little harder 180 than machine is this is a, the downside this is the reason i don't put it above right the 180. if the 180 ever gets uh, simplified a little more for war i would put it above machine is but it's it's very close so like just to make it short for like the amazing tier if you would rather uh, have uh, no issues with your time whatsoever but you you're gonna struggle against the monsters machinist but if you want the opposite if you want to not struggle against any monster but you're fine having problem with your time then where is better so it's like you you get to choose the two best there uh dark knight is like is like warrior light like it's everything i just said about warrior is basically true for dark knight for this reason it's it's a lot like summoner and machinist uh the the, the issue with dark knight is it, it it can handle no item debuffs way less good because you don't have the blackest knight yet in PTD. and so if you get no item you just don't have like a, a raw intuition equivalent so you're you're gonna be relying on serenities a little more but then everything else that i've said is true for warrior uh, for dark knight the same as warrior also the other thing with dark knight is that your 180 push is the easiest one out of, out of all the tanks so if you if you like if you enjoy the tank play style and you want a low pressure 180 dark knight is a job for you because the dark the thing with dark knight uh you don't need to keep your potion your regen potion taking during the push like it, it will die before you need to to rely on the regen potion which means it's one less button you have to care about which makes the 180 push very good um and yeah so so like everything i've said about warrior is that is true for dark knight so it's exactly like i said it's slight machinist and summoner except it's warrior and dark knight instead same like relation uh gunbreaker is so there there's this there's a misconception with gunbreaker i for some reason people think that gunbreaker does way more damage than the other tanks that is not true gunbreaker does a little more damage than the other tanks but it's like it's not a it's not big i believe it's like five percent it's really not that big um so everything i've said for warrior and dark knight is kind of true for gunbreaker but like gunbreaker has i would say one big downside of gunbreaker you have no ways to heal yourself like all the tanks all the warrior dark knight and paladin they all have ways to heal themselves quick right so like if especially if you're a new player and you run into a bad situation like you can run to Shana Warrior or Equilibrium. On Dark Knight, you can Living Dead. You can Abyssal Drain. Uh, and on Paladin, you can Clemency. And Invuln even. Like you can Invuln all these tanks. The thing with Dawnbreaker is you have no ways to heal fast. Like if you run into issues and you you start losing health, your Invuln is, is going to save you for 10 seconds. But like it's not going to heal you up much. Because all you can really do is use a potion during your uh, Super Bolide. And so for this reason, I, I don't think it's as good as Dark Knight. I would say it's decent. Uh, the other thing also with Gunbreaker is that uh, your 180 push is not as hard as Paladin, but it's not as easy as Dark Knight. I would say it's about the same difficulty as Warrior for the 180 push. Um, and yeah, like even though Gunbreaker does a little more damage, I, I just think it loses too many like uh, survi survival tools for me to put it like higher because I, I feel like the survival tools are the reason like that dark that warrior and dark knight are so good so like i i just think gunbreaker deserve to be indecent and now we're going to the healers so 
this this might be controversial because uh, I don't know. I feel like the healers are always a little misunderstood, and I, I feel like people they underestimate the healers. I I think white mage is really good. So white mage is like it's kind of like a tank, right? Like it's the kind of same mindset where you have to make sure you're saving time as much as possible. Um, and you do not have a shield in PTD for white mage. The thing is that the monsters they they're like significantly less hard than Evan on High. So like even though you don't have a shield for White Mage, it's still I, I feel like it's still easier to fight the monsters overall. Uh, you don't need steel for most of the monsters for all the healers. There's some that you're gonna need it. Especially things that have like nasty crits. But like for most of the monsters, you're not gonna need steel, which is a big upside. You are also uh very uh, resi resilient to uh, no item debuff. Like no item debuff is almost never an issue on healer, which means you it's a it's kind of like tank. Like you you don't have to rely on uh, using extremity on every no uh, no item debuff that you encounter. Um, also white mage in the case of white mage, its damage is very good. It's not as good as a DPS. It, it's as good as a bad DPS, right? It's like it's like similar to bard, similar to dancer. It's kind of like you do as much damage as a bad DPS. Also, the way your damage works, uh, works on White Mage, it's cooldown based damage. Uh, you have a you have a cooldown that increases your attack speed, your spell speed. That is a cooldown. And then you have your ass size, which is also only a cooldown. Doesn't need any resource for both of them. This makes uh, White Mage like very strong to kill something fast and then move to the next monster. And they just kind of keep doing that. It also has a dot that it, uh, does damage on application. So like, if you really need to move, you can just spam the dot and you're still getting a little bit of damage. Like, I honestly think it's strong. It, it's maybe not a, a strong strong. Like, it's more like a weak strong. Like, it could be decent, but it's... I'm looking at this. I, I do feel like White Mage is a little easier than Red Mage and Dawnbreaker. Like... Which is like... But like when you think about it, Red Mage does it's kind of like White Mage in the way that it's like it does more damage, but it heals less. I'm gonna put in decent for now. I might change my mind, but it's like I, I do feel like Red Mage and White uh, and White Mage are kind of like similar in difficulty. They at least felt similar in difficulty when I did them. Uh, I'll revisit later anyway. Color so. Color does really bad damage. That this is a big downside because you're already playing a job that uh, um, a job archetype that does low damage. But like even amongst them, this is he does low, even lower damage. Uh, that's very bad. Uh, big upside on Star is that you have shields. Oh yes, uh, I did not mention it, but for all the blue and the green jobs, like all the tanks and the healers, landmines are very easy to do. Um, because in POTD, landmines, the monsters that you use landmines on are, like, significantly weaker. <clears throat> and so, like, they're kind of all equal. Like, I would say all the healers and all the tanks, they kind of do the landmines, like, on equal, uh, terms. Like, they do, there, there's some that have easier ones. Like, Warrior has easier landmines because you can heal more. White Mage has easier landmines because you can stun all the monsters before. And sure, it does help a new player. But like, unless you're doing score runs where you're pulling like, you know, 15 plus monsters into a landmine. If you're just doing like 6 to 8 pulls, especially if you're witching, it doesn't really matter on which job you do it. it they're all going to do it fine. But like, even though you have big shields on Strutter, I, I, I just don't think it's that good of an upside. It's really, it's not that good of an upside for landmines. It's a good upside though when you're fighting something like uh, with a double auto attack, right? Like something that it's really hard. Um, uh, but like, again, like you're playing a low damage job. So if you have to shield yourself every 15 seconds, if you have to GCD uh, shield every 15 seconds, you're like already, ma you're making your damage even worse. Uh, and for this reason, I just, I don't think Shadow is decent. But I, I do think it's close, it's close between software and average. But Scarter's damage is is really bad, so like I, I'm I would be more tempted to put in support there, but I would say it's almost average. It's very close. 
Uh, next job is Sage. Sage is kind of like, it's honestly a lot like White Mage. Uh, it does not stun. Which honestly is not that big of a deal. It has shields, which White Mage doesn't have. It does similar damage to White Mage, a little less, I think. And it also doesn't really have a burst. And proper to White Mage, that's a little uh, that's a little thing that's worse. <laughs> but otherwise, it's pretty similar, honestly. It's like... It's it's definitely weaker than White Mage offensively, but like defensively, it's a little stronger. And I think the addition of the shields, they definitely make it like I would say almost the same as White Mage in difficulty. Like you, you, it kind of makes up for the lack of burst that you have on Sage. Uh, I'm trying to think of something else. So so like like I was saying, you can shield yourself uh, a lot on Sage. For the double uh, auto attack monsters, but it's not as big of a deal as Scholar because then you actually have good damage. Uh, well, uh, for a healer this time, so like it's you're not going to be set back too much if you shield yourself. Uh, I do think it it, de it deserves to be decent. I I'm pretty sure that's where I would put it. Uh, anyway, last job Astro. Astro is awful. So Astro has nothing going on for it. Like, the, like you. This is the only job on which you will need to do uh, multiple. I would, you would maybe need to do multiples on Strutter as well. A multiple is when you're pulling multiple monsters at the same time. You, you maybe will need it to do on Strutter, but like you, 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 you don't really need to on Strutter. When I, when I cleared Strutter, I, I mostly kept two single target and it was fine. But like on Astro, your damage is really bad, so you're gonna need to be doing multiples. You have no shield. Uh, which is a, a downside. Uh, you also rely more on steel because like everything you fight takes so long to kill that whenever you're fighting something that can kill you with a crit, you like you're you're risking your life for longer. Which means like it's kind of funny because you're a healer, but like this makes you rely on steel more. Uh, you also time time is really bad on Astro, so like. You're, you're in that weird spot where you're going to have to use almost all your commanders only to save time. I guess an upside of Astro is that, well, it's like the healer upside, right? Like, the no item debuff doesn't matter too much because you can just heal yourself through it. Um, and the 190 on Astro is, is kind of weird because you have to do st uh, a weird strat where you intentionally eat the blue bomb. And you let it freeze you because you just don't do enough damage to kill it. Uh, and also... a and uh, another big downside. Or I did not mention this, but a big downside for Scholar and Astro is that on a 190, they will need to steal twice. Which means you, you have to do the entire 181 set while trying to keep two steals on you. And for Scholar, it's okay because you can shield yourself. And so there's a lot of monsters you can kind of like get away by with killing, even though it's going to slow down your time a lot. At least you can do it. But on Ashley, you don't have a shield. So, like, you, you can get some floors where there's al almost nothing to fight on Astro, like, very easily. And then you can't steal because you need it for the 190 bus. And, yeah, so it's just, it's bad. It's not as bad as Evan on High, in my opinion. But it's pretty bad. But you, it's not as bad as Evan on High. For having done both, I would say it's it's a little easier. It feels more fair uh, in PUTD for Astro. Like, it feels like if you're doing a good job, then you don't need too much luck to clear. Uh, so anyway, I think that covers it. So now I'm going to go over over every single one and make sure that I still agree with everything. Uh, so let's start at the top. So do I think Machinists and Warrior are equal? I this is, I honestly, like uh, I would put like Warrior a little above, but like I would say they're mostly both amazing. Machine is amazing because uh, you kill everything so fast. Time is never an issue. Lots of monsters that you can do without steel. But but you're not a tank, so yeah, like you 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 you're not you you cannot pull everything. Like you can pull a lot of things, but not everything. And warrior is amazing as well, because warrior has time issues. But pretty much, since you don't need pomaders for any monster, you can use all your pomaders for time. And so as as soon as you're good at using your Promenders for time saving, then your warrior is like almost unbeatable. Like 
you would need a very bad set of debuffs to stop you from clearing all warrior. So I think they both deserve to be there. Uh, okay, so now let's be in strong. So ninja. Do I think ninja is weaker than machinist? I do think so. Do I think ninja is stronger than red mage? I do think so. Even if it's a melee, I think ninja is easier than red mage. Um, do I think it's equal with reaper? Yes, I agree. Uh, do I think they're both equal to summoner? Yeah. Yeah, I would say they're about equal. Like maybe summoner would be even a little higher. But it's definitely not amazing. It de it de definitely belongs to be there. That deserves to be there. And uh, I do think Dark Knight deserves to be there. And honestly, Dark Knight is kind of the same as Summoner. It's it's really close to being amazing. But I just I just don't feel confident putting it, putting it in amazing when Warrior is there and like does everything better, right? It's a lot like Machinist and Summoner. But like it's Warrior and Dark Knight instead. So I, okay, I agree with this here. Now let's see. Uh, is Red Mage decent? Is it better than Dragoon? Yes, definitely. Better than Mon, better than Samurai, better than Paladin? Definitely. Is it weaker than Dark Knight? Summoner? Yeah, I would say it belongs there. White Mage. Is White Mage stronger than Dragoon, Mon, Samurai, and Paladin? Yes, I think so. Is it weaker than Dark Knight? Yes, definitely weaker than Dark Knight. Is it weaker than Summoner, Reaper, Ninja? Yeah, okay. I think this deserves to be there as well. Um, Sage. I think Sage is pretty much the same as White Mage. I, like, I'm looking at everything. I, like, White Mage is a little better offensively, a little weaker defensively, and then Sage is a little weaker offensively, but a little stronger defensively, and it, they kind of, like, cancel each other's out. But I think they both belong there. Groundbreaker. Do I think Groundbreaker is worse than Dark Knight? Yes, no contest. Do I think it's better than Paladin? Yes, I Yes, but it's a small yes. Uh, it's... But Paladin's damage is pretty low, right? So, like, it, it's... Yeah, okay, I think it deserves to be there. I would say Red Mage... I would say Red Mage and Breaker are probably equal in difficulty. So, I do agree with this. Let's keep going. So, now, Average. Do I think Dragoon is harder than uh, Red Mage? I think so. Would I say Dragoon is better than Dancer? Hmm, that's a tough one. Okay, I, I... I think Redune is average. Now I'm just not sure if Dancer deserves to be higher. I'll, I'll revisit this later. So, do I think Redune and Mont are similar in difficulty? I think so. Do I think Samurai is similar in difficulty? Uh, yeah, I think so. And do I think Paladin is about the same as all of them? I think so. Paladin... Is Paladin harder than White Mage? Red Mage? Yeah. So, I think this tier is good. Now, this tier, I think I'm gonna boost dancer because dancer is definitely better than black mage and bard but it's like it's not one better like it, i think it should be two better and i don't think scholar and dancer are like dancer does have a pretty bad 180 it, but it's nowhere near as bad as bard like you don't need to do anything with resolution you don't need to do anything weird it's a rough push but it, it's it's like it it has a pretty rough push, but like everything else about it is like kind of okay, like okay damage, uh, big big burst, like you can pull up your resource and then you're fighting nonstop because you're a range GPS. So you know what? I think I think this job is average. I think dancer is average. Uh, would I say it's harder than Gunbreaker? Yes. Would I say it's better than Scholar? Yes. Would I say it's harder than Red Mage? Yes. I think so. So I think this belongs there. Uh, so now we're moving on to subpar. Scholar. Do I think Scholar is harder than Dragoon, Mon, Samurai, Dancer, Paladin? I think so. Do I think it's better than Bard and Black Mage? Yes. Yes. Uh, I think this belongs there. So do I think Bard is better than Astro? Yes. No contest. <laughs> do I think it's worse than Scholar? Yes. Uh, so like I said, Bard is like... It would be kind of like... It would be like somewhere between average and supper if the 180 was not as bad. The 180 is, is really bad. Lots of RNG. Requires a super sweaty setup. Uh, and also, I did not even thought about it, but like the thing with the setup on 180 on Bard is that you need dots. You have two dots that need to be on the boss before the push. Which means you need to account for the damage these dots do because you want the boss, when you push the boss, you want the dots to be 
to be uh, on the boss already, but you don't want the boss to be below 15%. But then you don't want the boss to be too high either, right? So, like, you have to do this whole map thing. It's very, very annoying. So, like, the Bard is bad. Like, <laughs> there's no saving that jump. Uh, Black Mage. I do think Black Mage is better than Astro. Do I think Black Mage is as bad as Bard? Yeah, it's... Yeah, I do think it's as bad. I think it's worse than Astro. I think Black Mage is to be there. It's just... No triple cast. Is ju it just makes everything so hard. Compared to FNLI. Like it's, it made such a big difference. And that... Keep in mind that is with the buffs that uh, Black Mage done it and Walker. Like, now Black Mage is better than before. Uh, in Shadow Ranger, it could have been awful. It had a lot of problems. I, I think now it's it was boosted up to bad. And do I think uh, Ash was the worst job? Yes, no contest. I I, I don't think it, it's like two entire tiers below, like it wasn't even high, but it's definitely worse than Bard and Black Mage. So I do think this is my tier list. I think everything is fine now. I do agree with everything. Like there's a couple I like I said I think like would deserve to be in between. Like I think Summer could be in between. I think Dark Knight could be in between. I think I think White Mage could. Sage as well. Then I think Paladin could be in between. Scholar is like no. No, okay. So like, there's a couple um, I that could like that you could art for, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the result. Uh, so there you go. That's my tier list for PUTD, which was uh, extremely requested, and now uh, now it's there. So you guys can check out the tier list. Give your opinions and thoughts in the comments. And uh, hopefully uh, when the new Deep Dungeon comes out, which is in five months, I think, uh, after I've cleared on every job, I can do another tier list for the, the new Deep Dungeon. And we'll see, uh, we'll see if it's similar to uh, the, the last two I've made. Uh, and we'll see if Warrior is still as strong as it was. So anyway, uh, thank you guys very much for watching the video. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one.